Normal distribution is the most common distribution in statistics. 95% area under the curve is essential to understand important concepts like confidence interval 95%, statistically significant levels 5%, and others. The present video aims at explaining the area 95% under Z table and T table. Again, in field of vision, we can see the probability plot of total deviation and of pattern deviation. These also related to the area under the curve. So let's start. Suppose we have a sample of people and rec we record their height. On the x-axis, we have the values from the smallest to the largest. And on the y-axis, we have the frequency we meet such a value. Now we have the frequency distribution curve of height. Such data can be of any shape. Sometimes data are left squid, that's to say tail is on the left side. Right squid, tail is on the right side. Multimodal can be trimodal, can be bimodal, can be normal distribution, can be uniform distribution. The normal distribution is the most common probability distribution in statistics. The shape is a bell shape with the mean in the middle, with a mirror image of half below the mean and half above the mean. As you notice down here, this is the mean, one standard deviation above the mean, two standard deviation three standard deviation above the mean, one, two, three standard deviation below the mean. And the area under each sector is written in percentage. The whole area under the curve equal 100% on one unit, but it can be divided in these percentages you see. So between minus 1 to plus 1 standard deviation, we have 68% of the data. If you increase to between minus 2 to plus 2, then we have 95% of the data. For 3, below 3 above, the range will cover 99.7% of the data. The most common point we have to keep in mind that between minus 2 up to plus 2 of the standard deviation, we get around 95% of the data. Now, let's have this example. Suppose this is the frequency distribution curve of money income for a population. We have a mean 1000, standard deviation 400. Now, first question, suppose we ask you, Mr. X has an income of 600 pounds. How poor is he? So here we have the mean 1000, one standard deviation above the mean so this value 1400 two standard deviation above the mean 1800 one standard deviation below the mean 600 two standard deviation below the mean 200 now the question how poor mr x with an income 16 600s so we want to know the area 
below this value we know that this is one standard deviation below the mean so 16% should be below that so we can say that Mr. X is poor he gets 16% of the people get income less than he has what about Mr. X2 with an income 200 how poor is he so 200 is at two standard deviation from the mean what's below it this is two and a half percent of the people okay Mr. X3 has an income of 1800 how rich is he so it's two standard deviation above the mean and we know this area covers 97.5 percent of the population suppose we have this question mr x4 has an income 1096 so this is one standard deviation and mr x has an income of 1396 so we can determine exactly the area below this value this is the x we subtract the mean and divide by the standard deviation if we do that we get a value of 0.99 can go to tables and subtract the percentage of this value so this is the table we call it the z table here 0.99 so nine percent nine first nine is here and second nine is there and the value is there so it's written here 93.89 percent or you can go to locations on the internet can make the calculation for you you just enter the mean the standard deviation and the new value you want to see the area to the left side when we enter ask to calculate you get the value there so we know that our value to the left side we have 83% to the left being a whole 100% then we can say that this area has a value of 16.1% so the tables always give us area to the left but we can make up this area if we need to let's have another example 50 randomly selected volunteers took an IQ test. Helen, one of the volunteers, scored 74. This is X from a maximum possible 120 points. The average score is 62. This is mu. And the standard deviation is 11. So one standard deviation, 11 above 62 will be 73 and our lady she gets a mark here 64 we can change this into z value the same way we did before then we get the value equals 1.09 then we can use the tables to know exactly this area or we can use the calculators on the net and we can have the same value what about ophthalmology in the print out of field we have these probability maps and this is the key probability 
5%, 2%, 1%, percent So any of these points, say this one, this point, it, it is there on the lower half, on the lower 5% of the population. The software check the sensitivity of each location many times and found the curve for that location. So the mean is known and the standard deviation is known. Then the 5%, the 1%, the half percent, the 2%, everything can be calculated. So if our patient has a value here, then we will say he is in the lower 2% or 1% of the population. So these values mean that those areas are found in the bottom 5%, 2%, 1%, half percent of sensitivity of normal subjects of the same age. So we say these points are low but this low value can be found in 5% or 2% or so of the normal population. So most probably these points are abnormal, but there is a chance of being normal by 5% or 2% or 1%. Again, here, Mean deviation, it is minus 5.6 with probability less than half. So less than half percent of the normal population can show this value. For the standard deviation, 2.85, this value has a probability of 2. Less than 2% of the normal population can show such a value. Here in the field of Heidelberg, fixation losses was 39% and such a value can only be found in less than half percent of the normal population. Mean deviation of the field minus 8.07 and this value can only be found in less than half percent of the normal population. Now back to statistics. When we are dealing with large number like population or sample large being 30 or more, we can use the, this, the tables, the Z tables. If the sample size is less than 30, we have to use the T tables. Here the normal distribution curve is shown in red. This is the Z distribution. The remaining are examples of T distribution. We have several T distributions for each sample size. T distributions are named after what we call the degrees of freedom. So if you have a sample size of six cases, the degree of freedom is five. If you have a sample size of three, the degree of freedom is two. As you notice, as the sample size gets less and less, this is two, this is three, this is six. When the sample size is less, the curve is shorter here compared to the normal. And if you come here, the ends are expanding more than the normal. So this is the difference. So see here, the black is the normal. Here we have degree of freedom, 29, so we have 30 cases. Degree of freedom is 5, this is 6 cases. Degree of freedom is 2, this is 3 cases sample. 
as you see, as the number of the sample reaches toward the 30, then the curve is similar to the normal distribution. That's why once we reach number 30, we can stop using the T distribution or the T tables and we can go for the Z tables. Here, the black, this is the normal distribution. We say that the area 95% is located two standard deviation below and two standard deviation above the mean. But if you check the blue one, then the area 95 can be of a value extending from minus to say 0.1, 0 0.2, up to plus 2.2. Here, the red is the normal distribution. The dotted blue line is small size uh, this, uh, sample. So if you want to check the area 95%, in the normal distribution, it is around 2. So 2 below, 2 above. This is 2.5, this is 2.5, and, and here we have the 95%. But in case of the small sample size, it is starting here. So it is not 2, it is more than 2 on this side and on that side. Let's see it here. This is the Z score. Actually, the area 95% extends from minus 1.96 standard deviation up to plus 1.96 standard deviation. So we roughly said 2, but actually it is not 2, it's 1.96. If the sample size is 21, so the degree of freedom is 20, the 95 area the limits from minus 2.8 minus 2.08 if the sample size is smaller then the limit will be minus 2.2 to plus 2.2 standard deviation if the sample size is 2 only then the limit starts from minus 2.26 standard deviation up to plus 2.26 so this is the importance of using which table. If the sample size is 30 or more, we can go for the Z score. And the standard deviation here, around two. But if the sample size is less, we use the corresponding table and the value is found on the table. So we know exactly how much we should add, how many standard deviations should add to reach the area 95%. The value of all this will be discussed in upcoming videos when we discuss the level of significance being 5% or 2.5% and when we discuss the confidence interval 95 so just keep the information now and the value will be discussed in future videos. Thank you for your attention.